The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Experiencing the plays, great performances, and compelling stories each week from the archives of great productions of Hollywood's best producers and actors. We now go back to the early days of radio and our imaginations with our featured drama presentation. Arthur the King by Graham Fife, with music by Stephen Foe. Part 3, Gareth, with Keith Baxter as King Arthur, Anna Massey as Morgan Le Fay, Rosalind Shanks as Linnet, and Crawford Logan as Gareth of Orkney. We welcome all, all in fellowship to this high feast of Pentecost, remembering those of us absent who will come to recount their adventures, and those others forever lost, who leave their seats at this table empty a season, to be filled by new men. Fresh blood pumping from our same heart. Per nostrum dominum Jesum Christum, qui ascendit in Caelum ubi sedit ad dexteram patris. Per diveniet judicare mortuos et vivos. Amen. Amen. Adventure before the feast. Young giant. Strong as a horse looks. Lollops like one. Cart horse. Gentles all. I would speak with the king. Child. Let him approach. Man. So tall. So broad shouldered. Handsome. With that long neck and cropped hair. He must have come for the job of fool. Or dairy maid, mixing butter with those great paddles stuck at the end of his arms. King Arthur, may God bless you and all your fair company of the round table. <laughs> I have come this feast day to ask you, direct, three gifts... The first one given, I will ask the other two a year from today, wherever you hold your high feast. You may ask. I ask. Food and drink at your court this twelve months till I petition you again. Oh, Looks like a servant, behaves like a servant. He asks only the same as we receive. We are the king's liege men. I never refused such an asking to friend or enemy. You are welcome. What is your name? I cannot tell you. <laughs> no name? No sign. You have at least the bearing of a lord's son. Sir Kay, give our manly foundling <laughs> meat. Meat and drink. I thank you, my lord king. In the king's name... Well, steward, a nobleman's son does not snivel and cringe to the king for soup, Sir Gawain. He asks hauberk and shield and horse. 
This one is more clod than grazing beast. Come, some nobody big hands. Ah, I will give you a handsome name, Bowman's. And handsome being as handsome does, see if you're as handy with a bowl of fat bros as you are with a Welsh bow, which I should guess is the churl's weapon those paws of yours know best. I'll show you to your new home by the larder. Have a care, Sir Kay. The lad is the king's guest. And bred in an abbey by the heifer look of him. Ate them out of bread and broth, so they sent him off to court to pander for it. You have been wrong before, Sir Steward. Sir Lancelot, if they come to court with no name. Too handsome? Two hands the size of four. And too civil, too, to Sir Kay's too envious two eyes. My <laughs> lord, the king gave orders to feed and water the orphan, so I will feed and water him where food and water is readiest at hand for those prepared to stoop the kitchen. Follow me, Bowmans. Come and sup with me, lad. No, me. Sir Gawain. Or meat with Sir Lancelot, sweet meat with Gawain. A walking buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sirs. You are generous. You are courteous. Bowmans! I will go as I am bidden. <laughs> he has the same gangly look of Percival when he first came. Percival? I... The pig boy, our brass tongue steward, called him. Yes. Grunts and oinks a lot himself, our Sir Sulk Peevish. <laughs> Disappointed in love. You think so? Well, don't you? Omens, <laughs> this pot is not boiling. Fire, boy. Bellows up and put some elbow into it. Yes, sir. Omens! Sir. Are you asleep? He is at the bellows, Sir Kay. So am I, and horse with it. Did you not hear me call you, booby? Or did you have those hands of yours draped across your ears? No, sir. A pitcher of water to Sir Percival. Instantly. Yes, sir. Again. To me, I think. So, check. Shift balance. Check. And cut. Full weight of arm and shoulder. Like, like a punch. Drive right through the target. Right through it. Oh, there. Good. Now, left-handed. Left, my lord Sir Lancelot. Yes, left. And why left? Because you tell me. And why do I tell you? Because it's important. Because the strength of left goes into right. Both hands, Bowmans. Even if the right hand is stronger. Keep both double each. Now, more weight of armour on you. And again. Another gold bezant in the helmet. Win it from me. Ready. Are you? Here! Here! Quicker, quicker, quicker on the turn. Here! And again! Chess is king and queen. Queen and king. Battle. It is also love, which is the same thing. And queen is more powerful than king, which she is. You doubt that, Bumans? I'm not sure. Now, that not sure is sentiment, Bumans. I advise you against sentiment. In fact, the perfect remedy for sentiment is tables. There is no sentiment in tables. It is win all, lose all, and swiftly as a good sword cut. Chess may be strung along and drawn out, but not tables. The back game to teach you stratagems and cunning. And Gwythbwyth, where king is cornered heart, attempting to break through the cordon of huntsmen and away to freedom. In love, it is better to hunt than be hunted. The one, escape or die. The other, guess. <laughs> I can't. The catch, Bowman's, for the taking. The board is also useful as a makeshift shield. Shield? If you are ever caught, well, how shall we say, by surprise? In battle? Do concentrate, Bowmans. I mean, a lady's chamber is generally ill-equipped with shields of the more regular pattern. I see. I wonder if you do. <laughs> and you must learn to dance. Naturally. Yes. Which is all three games simultaneously to music. Now, where shall we start? <laughs> Over there? Where? Do you think 
she might play well. She is very anxious to avoid us, which proves how very anxious she is not to avoid us. Let us test her powers of not to be persuaded. All work for the fire in the great hall. Extra rushes for the passageway into the great hall. I can't hear myself think for the clatter of clod hopping oafs. Backwards and forwards. Proceed on tiptoe. Yes, sir, Clay. We have to look at you. We have to smell you. There can be no reason on earth why we should also have to endure the sound of your clumping feet as well. <sighs> Immensely strong. Yes? He would pluck you giddy off your feet as you were no heavier than a down quilt. A down quilt. Mm. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Look. <laughs> Call him. Shall I? Do. Bermance? Bermance? <laughs> Shh! Over here! My lady? Uh, ladies? Do come and sit with us a while in the shade. Amuse us. I... Oh, it's so hot. <laughs> you must be quite worn out with all your dreary traipsing up and down. Up and down. Uh, uh, Sir Kay has... Oh, fiddle, Sir Kay. Don't twit us with Sir Kay. It's an excuse not to sit with us in the arbor. Hmm? Oh, do come. I, I, I must... I must. must. Fusty, musty bowmans. <laughs> come and enjoy the cool of the garden. Unlace a bit. Uh, I, I have, have to... to uh, an errand in a hurry... Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Eighth finger, fortitude. Fortitude. Ninth finger, gentleness. Gentleness. Tenth finger, perseverance. Perseverance. In your two hands, the qualities that make night. Now again, first finger, courtesy. Courtesy. Second Sir finger. Lancelot. Yes. Well, say what you must. Will I be knight? That depends on knowing how to deserve, and then deserving. You must deserve of Arthur the King. You must deserve of God. You must deserve of your fellow knights. You must deserve of yourself. Second finger, generosity. Generosity. Sweet Sir Gawain. This one undone. And this one. And this one. One by one. Oh, by sweet one. Sir Gawain. Oh, sweet Sir Gawain. Now, gently. Gently. Oh, uh, Sir Gawain, I. Well, come for chess practice. No, I... Uh... Then perhaps you will close the door as you go. There is a sizable impertinence of cold breezing in and out through the cranny as it is. I'm sorry, Sir Gawain, I... I... <sighs> oh, what's the matter? <laughs> what's... what's the matter? No, oh, let me go! Let me go! Oh, Sir Gawain... Will I be knight? <laughs> Arthur the King! Arthur the King! Stop your head. All gathered to our feast. Welcome. My Lord King! My Lord King, please hear me. For one of your knights to help. Gently. Come now, steward. A stool for the damsel to sit on. Now, tell me. My lady, a noble, illustrious lady, is besieged in her castle by one of the perilous, cruelest knights in the world. What is her name? I, I cannot tell you that. 
But her vile enemy is the Red Knight of the Red Blades. I do not know him. I do, sire. I brushed with him once. They say he has the strength of seven men. And has he? I don't know, sire. I fought with him nearly a week's worth, six days, but then it came the Sabbath. And? I escaped. <laughs> my Lord King, joking will not save my lady. Damsel, you must understand that any knight of this round table will go to save your lady like flame to tinder, knowing her name and title. But if you will not vouchsafe us who she is... My Lord King... Silent, wretch. Let him speak. Sire. A year ago at Pentecost, you gave me one gift and promised me two more. My lord, I have served you in the kitchens for victuals. Now, this Pentecost, I would ask my other gifts. We are engaged in another matter. I will rescue this damsel's lady. That is the first gift I ask. Kitchen boy. Then... I grant it. The second? I wish to be made knight, if I am worthy. But of Sir Lancelot du Lac, I ask that you let him ride after me and dub me alone. I grant it. Sir <laughs> Beaumans. A kitchen boy? A scullion dipped in tallow to save my lady? What contempt of Arthur and his round table is this? I will rather go and ask the first blind beggar I meet for help. Sir Bowman, I grant you this adventure. Be sure you achieve it for us. Aye, my lord. Armor, weapon, horses, provisions for Sir Bowman. Sir Kay, sir, at once. I will follow, by and by. You do me honor, Sir Lancelot. Then repay it with honor. She was spirited, that one. Breeding, it's breeding. What's that? A pot stirrer or a lance, kitchen boy? Perhaps you would find out, Sir Stewart. Why, don't you know? I know very well. Very well, then. Great! Great! Fetch a litter for your master. Uh, uh, he is ailing. Yes, sir. Are you badly hurt, Sir Kay? I'll live. Water? No. Thank you. There will be someone here soon. Forgive me for leaving you. Not that you will mind foregoing my company. Ja! Castle Perilous, Castle Perilous, where unknown lady lies besieged, besieged, Castle Perilous. Hold, knight, if you be knight, who asks, or is it an armorer's apprentice running errand? Item, one suit of mail, item. One set of arms for delivery to true knight. You are in my path. Perhaps you are in my path. On whose business do you galump along it? Arthur the King's. Arthur the King's. Knight of the Round Table, is it? Not yet. Not yet? Then you are not yet worth blunting a sword on. Get out of the way, boy. I have King Arthur's commission. But not yet his sword on your shoulders. Stand down! The worthiest knight of his court has promised me that, and I will pass on the king's matter. So, unsheathe your sword or your reputation. It is the same to me. I will do both. So. Sir Bowmans? Sir Lancelot, 
I did not know. I hardly knew you. Down from your horse and set your knee against my foot. Unbuckle your sword. Now give it to me. Now you know all that chivalry demands of you. I do. Then fulfill it, whatever the cost. I will. In the name of God, in the name of Arthur the King and the Fellowship of the Round Table, be Arthur's man, loyal in all things. Truth and honor are your spurs. Courage is your sword. And this steel on your shoulder makes your name. I dub you... No. Be quiet. My name. I am... Gareth of Orkney. Nephew to the king. Sir Gawain's brother. Born long after him. I sought no privilege to earn my name if I could. Andy Dandy Bowman's. <laughs> I dub you Sir Gareth of Orkney. <sighs> well, do you propose to dawdle here all day with your nose in the moss? No. Embrace me. Thank you. Sir Lancelot, you lack. Your best thanks is this quest. Let me see you into your saddle. No stirrup. <laughs> Go to, Sir Gareth. Yes! <laughs> Bucket? To do your lady service, as I promised the king. Go back to your kitchen. Pots and pans are piling up. They won't clean themselves. I'm not a scullion. I am a knight, dubbed by Sir Lancelot. <laughs> With a cauldron on your head, a dishcloth on your back and a skillet round your neck. <laughs> In King Arthur's name, I will challenge the knight of the Red Glade. Challenge? I... Like a mongrel at a caged lion. God willing, I will rescue your lady from duress. My lady already has a menial to turn the spit and a menial to clean the spit. She needs no menial wrapped as night to make her spit contempt. King Arthur sent me and I will come. Help! Help! What is it? Ah, my master ah! being attacked. Ah! Robbers! Five or six brigands beating him to death. Quickly, please, over there! Ah! Who are you, knight? King Arthur's man. King Arthur's galloping. This, your lady? I am not his lady any more than a smear of candle wax belongs to silk taffety. Good people, you must be my guests tonight. Oh, oh sir. I insist. I... My keep is not far. I would have been robbed, murdered. I owe you hospitality at the very least. Please, my house is your house. As long as there is room at a sideboard for this pantry urchin, I will not eat at a table with a poltroon whose job it is to clear it. Come, we may beat the storm. It's not far. Boy. Yes, master. Lead on. Show the lady to the guest chamber, daughter. Yes, father. You have had enough to eat? And plenty, thank you. And you, sir? A truckle bed by the fire will serve him. Oh, surely. As the lady says. Very well. Good night. Good night.
Sir? I have come to... What? What is... To keep you warm, sir, as the fire dies. What? Please. Put your gown on. You'll freeze. Am I ugly? Put your gown on. No, very beautiful. You don't desire me. I... I may not desire you. Do you understand? No. Uh. Your father told me... No. No, my father told me... to see if you were honourable. Uh. And so you are. Very honourable. Fine and bright. Ah, provisions... Water! I have it, my lord. Good, good. Safely. Go safely. Godspeed, lady. I thank you. Sir Knight. Sir Knight. Servant. Hup. Follow the stream. Three miles to the ford. Follow the stream. Castle Perilous, where unknown lady lies besieged, besieged. But beware of other perils before you. Beware, beware. Old knight, no one passes this wall. None. Stay that side the wall. Pass. Ah, oh, <laughs> I said we pass. <laughs> Body larder page. Say what you like. I serve God. I fight hard to win your lady. Bye. Scullery Pippin slain two brave knights, guardians of the crossing, ignoble. In black glade by black thorn, black banner and black shield, black horse with black silk trappings tethered to black stone, and in harness black as ripe blackberry, first brother of three to come, black knight, black knight. Perilous passages to pass. Beware, beware. Oh, you do not pass here. There you are wrong, Black Knight. We pass. Knight of King Arthur's court. Tis pot boy. As high born as you, Black Knight. Then stir yourself if you are. <laughs> 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 Pilford black armour suits you, cauldron scara, soot colour, stove colour, coal colour, sir clanking black kettle, 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 kettle. Second brother of three, green knight in harness, greener than May grass, and horse and shield, emerald green, and fight till sweat and blood takes away your sight. Burn in the fire of sword edges. Oh, spare me! Spare me! Unless this lady asks me for your life. Never. Then die! Wait, spare me, I beseech you. Ask him my life as it were yours. My lady... Him. Ah. Sir, I 
pledge you homage, I and my thirty knights, to King Arthur, and welcome. But not half as welcome as this lady's kind words. Pa! And third brother, Blue Knight, blue as field cornflower, rag petaled, cut to the ground like cornflower stalk, in pass perilous. No! Kill me not! The blood pales on your armor, Blue Knight. Your life is this lady's if she asks it. If not, it runs out. Ask her. My lady. No. Then. Do not kill me for want of a kind word. I swear to you homage. Mine and fifty knights, your vassals. Shame. Disgrace. Groveling to a basin boy. Do not kill me. Knowing my skill with dirty dishes, the sword blade is clean, my lady. Shall I carve his head from his shoulders? No. Spare him. Ha! It is a round pleasure to spare gallant knight for you. Ha! And you, sir... I shall send for you and your men to do homage to King Arthur. Be ready. Homage. Homage. To Arthur the King. By way of you. It is serving best venison in a pig trot. Madam, you are uncivil, uncourteous. Uncourteous. Should I curtsy to you, Pope Porridge? I serve the King... I serve his round table. I wish to serve your lady for her honour, to rescue her from foul night. I act with good intent in all manner. Courteous. As God is my strength. Oh, bravo! Politely said. Did you learn your polishing of words with your rubbing up of spoons? You begin to swagger, as if you were a Sir Lancelot or Sir Tristram. I tell you, catch crumb. There is coming one who will pay you out your wages for swaggering. Table knights left to rot like carrion. <gasps> Who has done this? Carnage! He will pay. He will pay. Right. Take care. Take care. With this abomination hanging about me. You must know about him. No. Him? His strength decreases after noon. Wait till past noon. Please. No. If he is here, I will fight him now. Who is he? Tell me. The Red Knight of the Red Blades. Wait till past noon. Bloody night. No. Wait. Butcher. Come down here. Butcher. Whom do you call Butcher, Sir Noisy? Did you do this? Who sent you? Did you do this? Barbarity! In the name of King Arthur, did you do this? The name is your death warrant, Churl. Did you do this? 
Answer! Do you use your shield as well as Rattlet? Did you do this? Yes. Join them! There are plenty of trees left in this forest! Looking up as meat sacks to do your work! The Bowman! Say it all night, Lady Soft. The Bowman's here, me dear knight. Where is your strength gone? My lady is not half a mile from here for love of her. I beg you, do not be killed. I beg you, for love of her. It is noon past. For love of her, who is she? Tell me her name. Softly, good night. Tell me her name. Madame de Lioness. Ah. And you, what of you pleading with me, insulting me? What of you, my Lady Lynette? Have done! Fight for them both! Die for them both! No! Live! For me! For me! Live, I beg you! No! No! Enough! Coward! 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 I killed them. Knights of the Round Table. Lancelot Gawain, don't know one of them killed my lady's brother. Thwart a revenge for the lady. Enough. I should hang you up here with them. For love. My lady. As you decide. My lord. I love these dead knights. My brothers. And if I spare you, what price, my love? Cheapened on their murderer. So you would murder me. Does this talk when I have beaten you make the stroke? Murder? You would have killed me without a boast as I kill you now. Your life in defense of this lady and her damned lioness. Damned lioness. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> you and your gentleness. You have done what I dared not believe you could. I was sent, compelled to shrew you, masking my fear, my feeling. Will you forgive me? Oh, come, no talk of that. <laughs> With all my heart. If you will have it. Perilous. It's dangerous past. Oh. Who laid this trial on you? Trial on me? No. On you. Ah. The damned lioness. She is enthralled to ah. sweet night. <laughs> Castles perilous to unwary knight, where he may lie for love, where he may die for love, as Acalon lay there at Arthur's feet. Beware all castles perilous, you knights.
Gate, a great company to do you homage and pay fealty, promises of land and duty. They do not come of their free will. No, my Lord King. By whose order, then? Um, <clears throat> who sent them? Sir Bowman, sire. Who was Sir Bowman's when he left this court? Was Sir Bowman's? Not Sir Bowman's now, sire. Apparently, Sir Gareth of Orkney, brother to Sir Gawain, your nephew. My brother? I <laughs> Did I not tell you? My Lord King! I have come to ask you here another favour. Uh, does nothing but ask favours. My brother, Sir Kay, mind, beat the Red Knight. You fill my castle with a mob of vassal knights squawking homage, and then ask me a favour? My lord. In public court where it would be churlish to refuse? My lord, I withdraw the request. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Ask, Sir Gareth. You have earned another favour. Only the hand of this lady in marriage. My brother, marriage? And she? I, my lord. I, my lord. Then, joyfully, I grant it. My brother married? <laughs> Lose a brother, gain a sister in law, Gawain. <laughs> Handsome, too. Think of that. Hmm? In Gareth, part three of Arthur the King by Graham Fife, Crawford Logan played Gareth, with Rosalind Shanks as Linnet, Keith Baxter as King Arthur, and Anna Massey as Morgan Le Fay. Nicholas Farrell was Sir Lancelot, Ewan Meredith, Sir Gawain, Michael Kilgariff, Sir Kay, with Tara Dominic, Joe Kendall, Marcia King, John Bull, Brian Miller, Simon Treves, and James Green. The music is by Stephen Foe. Arthur the King is directed by John Powell. <laughs>